Just four years ago, I wanted a cat. Instead, I got a rabbit. With its beige color coating, it didn't look bad, yet I still hated it. The high maintenance and annoying behaviors nerfed me. However, I could still see a cherished life inside of it. But that's not what workers in fur farms think, as they skin a multitude of rabbits, sometimes alive, to capture their fur so as to later be sold in the fashion industry. And it was honestly disturbing to think that these same rabbits, who had such similar features to my own, were treated in overwhelmingly inhumane conditions to serve what? Our never-ending demands for products. That brings us to an ideology and system combined that formulates this entire TED Talk, and that is consumerism. Focusing on the economic aspect, consumerism thrives in economies and society by encouraging individuals to consume an excessive amount of goods and services, often beyond what they need or can afford, to rocket economic growth and societal success. By that definition alone, you can tell that consumerism, ironically, consumes most aspects of our daily lives by immersing it in innovation and increased quality. However, as any double-edged sword would have it, it has its drawbacks, and very serious ones at that. Good day, everyone. I'm Fatima Habibullah, and the anecdote you heard earlier was one of those drawbacks. Animal cruelty is doing deliberate acts to harm animals. Unethical? Yes. Uncommon? No. But consumerism does have a way of accentuating its presence from the entertainment industry to the leather industry, where actually an investigation was done in 2017 by the Animal Welfare Institute that found cows in this industry were treated brutally with barbaric acts like tail docking. Imagine you as a human having your arm unwillingly severed through numerous sensitive nerves, muscles and cartilage. And this was done to cows, sometimes without pain relief, to make the production process easier. Because when consumerism travels as fast as it does, the products involved need to be faster. That's part of the reason why exploitation of workers exists so widely in this system. The high demand and steady maintenance of pro producing low-costing products leads to low wages, and a prolonged and unsafe working environment, since it was always profits over people. The prioritization of financial gain over morality is so stark in this ideology, in which I have discussed only two examples, animal cruelty and exploitative labor. But there's many more, from the clear environmental degradation going on, with dramatic statistics to back it up, like how the top 1% of emitters each, each had globally one uh, carbon footprints more than 1,000 times greater than the bottom 1% of emitters. Yet the most relatable one that I think all of us can agree to, to some extent, is manipulative marketing techniques. Majority of the tactics that fall into this category are pretty frequent in an average person's life, one of them being limited time offers. This, you probably felt a sense of urgency whenever you heard of these offers. This sometimes elicits fear, a well-known feeling that businesses constantly prey on to deliver an emotional appeal. Yet the feeling doesn't always have to be fear, as proven by several different campaigns that played on numerous themes like inclusivity and empowerment. And another practice that, most, uh, that circles around the internet is, manipul uh, is celebrity endorsements and their desirable slogans. Yet these two seem almost tame compared to other methods of spreading a brand name. These can come in the form of faking reviews or ratings, place leading misleading claims like all natural with no proof, or even adding on fees during shipping, handling, or taxing at the checkout to a price that was once considered understandable. So the question is, is consumerism a reflection of our individual desires and needs, or is it driven by powerful marketing and advertising campaigns? Advertising is everywhere. They're inescapable as they're such crucial standpoints for letting companies pass along their brand image therefore catapulting consumerism. And as you may already know, they have a very significant impact on our preferences. That's just human nature. So the best way to combat it, in my opinion, is to just be aware. This allows us to make informed decisions that have not let impulsivity take over due to perhaps the emotive or persuasive language used. It also aids in distinguishing between genuine benefits and false claims. Moreover, it helps in creating conscious choices that align with our values and goals and guides us to take back control of our consumption habits. 
But just a disclaimer, not all marketing techniques that you see are unethical or untruthful. Some are uncommon, but when the majority fall into the other category to fit the needs prescribed in the consumer society, it becomes our responsibility to see the tricks and traps that may have been laid out on us. And if you think about it, transparency isn't always the best way to sell your product, which reminds me of a quote by Naomi Klein. So if, marketer, so if consumers are like roaches, then marketers must forever be dreaming up new concoctions for industrial strength trade. This quote basically highlights the competitive nature of the business world, as the comparison to roaches implies consumers are difficult to get rid of. So companies must take charge in developing new and innovative strategies to keep our attention aligned. The analogy of industrial strength trade emphasizes the amount of effort companies must place to stay ahead of the game. Just as RAID is a very powerful insecticide that can quickly eliminate roaches, companies must keep on developing new uh, campaigns and products to keep our attention aligned. That is why sustainable products are increasingly becoming more common to fit the needs of our planet. This provides the resources to be able to decrease our consumption levels. Even just buying products that are durable and have a longer lifespan are easy ways to contribute to something worthwhile. In conclusion, consumerism has become a pervasive force in modern society, where our happiness is determined by material means or other drastic measures, instead of simplicity. Negative effects will always be there, unless we can make a difference by choosing to support businesses that prioritize fair and safe labor practices, and by valuing relationship experiences over material possessions. It is up to all of us to be more mindful and think before we blindly receive. In a time when consumerism is both at its worst and best, we as a society should utilize the rights and responsibilities provided in order to create a more sustainable future for not only our generation, but the next. And this does not need to be in the form of advocacy. It can also be just being aware. This allows us to think critically about how our own consumption habits not only affect our minds, but our sense of identity. Let us all strive for a future where consumerism is no longer a primary driving force in society, but where we can find fulfillment in a more balanced way. Thank you.